this evening. A very warm welcome to Hartford College Chapel from our household to yours. My name is Mia Smith, I'm the College Chaplain and I'll be leading our services of Choral Evensong this term. We're going to begin our services remotely. This is because it's the best way to keep everyone safe at the moment. Our theme for the term will be expecting the unexpected. So who knows what will happen as term, time goes on. Some of the elements of our services will be expected if you've been following us for the past six months. So from next week onwards, we will be beginning our services with an interview from a member of the college community. And they'll be talking about what they're expecting from this term and what has been unexpected this term. It'll be a great way of making connections and finding common ground as we navigate these strange times as a college community. Perhaps one of the small advantages of meeting remotely is that we can have speakers from anywhere in the world. We're exploiting this by having Chris from South Australia. He's an academic who specialises in the social contract and he will be speaking to us about that, making of course that connection with Thomas Hobbs of Hartford College. We'll also be hearing from Margot. She's an environmental ethicist and a Christian priest, and she will be talking about a book she's just published on the pandemic and the environmental impact. We'll also be hearing from Taz. Taz is the chaplain to the Quaker community at the university, and Taz will be telling us a little bit more about how the Quaker tradition expects the unexpected. In terms of music, you can expect some old favourite themes. So we'll be using our wonderful catalogue of recorded music. Thank you, Faris Zaki, for that. And we'll also be continuing with the highly successful Hartford College Chapel Choir and Team as we make music remotely and together. But this term, there will be some unexpected surprises as we employ every creative tool that we have in the toolbox to work out how we can sing together in person in a way that is safe and that is legal. Do look out for those ventures in the coming days. I wonder how you are feeling tonight. I wonder what you expected of your return to Oxford or indeed of your arrival in Oxford and I wonder if there have been unexpected elements. I think there are all kinds of emotions around at the moment as we navigate these strange times. There's anxiety, there's frustration, there's disappointment, there's anticipation, there's excitement, there's creativity. However you're feeling tonight, we're going to take a moment of silence before we turn to our worship and we're just going to acknowledge to ourselves and before God how things are.
opportunity to have a look in Hartford College Chapel yet. Hartford College Chapel is a lovely building built at the beginning of the 20th century and designed by the architect Jackson. He also designed our bridge and our rather whimsical staircase up to the hall but he stated a very strong preference for chapel as his favourite creation. It's well worth a look inside. It may not be what you're expecting. Many chapels in Oxford and many churches around the world are very ornate and decorative. And all over the, the, the walls and the windows, you will have depictions of human beings, usually from Bible stories or usually from those who have gone before us. Our college chapel is very different in that the creatures you will encounter are of the non-human variety. We're going to look at a few of them tonight and talk about how they relate to our life at Hartford College and in the University of Oxford. The first animal, perhaps unsurprisingly, that I'd like to draw your attention to is the owl. Owls are long famed for their wisdom. And hopefully, one of the things you will gain during your time at Oxford will be wisdom. That's not just knowledge. That's not just degree, a degree. That's something a bit more profound. And I'd like to talk to you about the kind of wisdom you might achieve at Oxford. Our institution exists for the purposes of education and while you're here we hope that your learning will grow, that you will thrive academically. One such person who thrived academically at Hartford College was William Tyndall. He went on after his graduation to translate the Bible 
As a young man, he is rumoured to have had an argument with a priest in which he said, I'm going to teach every person who has never read anything, the people who work in the farms, to read the Bible better than you can and to understand it better than you can. Fighting talk, perhaps, but actually William Tyndall did then go on to translate the whole Bible into English, the first person to do so. William Tyndall uh, paid a very heavy price for that, and we will come on to that later with another one of our creatures. But if you have a passion, pursue it at Oxford. John Dunn, alumnus of this college, wrote a poem saying that no man is an island. All of us have a profound role to play in the world and in the life of this college and this university. This might be through your academic excellence. It might be through your sporting passions or your love of music or your heart for welfare. To paraphrase Dunn, if you aren't authentically yourself, then Hartford and Oxford would be the less. It is my daily prayer for this community that everyone here will grow in wisdom and that you will full, more fully become the amazing people that God has made you to be. May you all pursue and find wisdom during your time at Hartford College and the University of Oxford. The next animal I'd like us to have a look at is the snake. Snakes and humans have a long history of suspicion and hatred. And of course, when we see the snake in this carving, he looks very menacing. He's about to attack. He's probably venomous. One of the things that we encounter on Broad Street, apart from lovely shops, is a cross built into the surface of the road. This marks the spot where the Protestant martyrs were burned at the stake. It's a very vivid reminder as normal life goes on around it that when we have strongly held principles and ideas, we can close down how much we listen to others and how much we value those who see the world in a different way to us. We're living in increasingly divided and tense times. Tolerance of difference is constantly being challenged. And it seems to me that civilised debate may be giving way to angry insults in some areas. This is very worrying. Hartford alumnus Charles James Fox spoke of these dangers in a speech to the House of Commons in 1790. Persecution always says, he said, I know the consequences of your opinion better than you know them themselves. But the language of toleration is always amicable, liberal and just. It confessed its doubts and acknowledged its ignorance. May we all have that kind of wisdom when we're at Hartford College. You have so much to learn from others, even or perhaps especially from those who differ from you. Hartford has a long tradition of understanding this. Hartfordians will have already heard about the legend that is Neil Tanner, the Hartford tutor who actively encouraged recruitment to Hartford from non-traditional backgrounds by building links with state schools in the 1960s and 70s. This embrace of the other, the relative outsider, paid off as our results began to soar as a result. May we all live well with difference. May we not engage in poisonous hatred. The next animal I'd like you to draw your attention to is the phoenix. The phoenix, of course, is a symbol of, of rebirth, of emerging from the ashes and growing into something new and beautiful and strong. In 1820, Hartford College was at its lowest ebb. Almost as a kind of visual representation of this, the building itself suddenly collapsed into the street one day in 1820. But of course, as we know from the beautiful front of our building today, that was rebuilt in a beautiful, strong and enduring way. You don't need me to tell you that this year has been quite unusual. So many of us have faced disappointments frustrations, 
cancelled weddings, holidays lost, things we were looking forward to postponed, opportunities to make friends and engage with others lost, jobs gone, and for some of us we may have lost people precious to us. It has been a very hard year. How will we rebuild as a community and as individuals? If you are struggling, let me say this. Please, please get some help from this college, from our welfare team, or from your own college, or from your friends or your family. You matter. Your life matters. One student who dropped out last year after a term said to me, please tell the freshers to get help as soon as possible. It would have made all the difference to me, she said. At Hartford, you can contact me or any other member of the welfare team. You can contact your welfare reps or the peer supporters or the junior deans. Anyone in choir or members of chapel, please do get in touch if you need to. Alumnus John Dunn famously said, no man is an island entire of itself. Every man a piece of the continent, a part of the main. We belong together. We're a community. So particularly in these times of strange household bubbles, be a good friend, be a good neighbour. If there's someone in your household who hasn't quite bonded with you all yet, invite them to things, hang out with them in your kitchen. If you know a friend is struggling, talk to them on Teams or get advice from someone else about how you can help. Too often people's well-being is at risk, even lives are at risk, because we don't get the help we need. Let's make sure everyone in our community is supported. But of course, rebuilding is a little bit broader than uh, how you personally may be feeling. Rebuilding as a community may take some time. It will take resilience. We've lost opportunities. Graduates last year didn't get a chance to say goodbye properly. Freshers this year have missed out on all kinds of things already. And together we can rebuild. Because how we deal with disappointment and frustration is an indicator of who we are. Let's commit ourselves to rebuilding well together. And the final animal I'd like to draw your attention to is perhaps predictably the Hartford heart. Isn't it beautiful? The motto of Hartford College, of course, is about the heart from the Psalms. It says, like the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs for you, O oh God. So many people in Hartford's history have lived lives that show this thirst, either for knowledge or for God or for something else. In the anti-chapel, we see William Tyndall, Bible translator who longed to see everyone in the country being able to understand the Bible in his own language. He, he pursued that with every fibre of his being and he ultimately ended up giving up his life for that cause. But I'd like to talk to you about another alumnus who sought God. That is Evelyn War. He spent a lot of time at Hartford drinking to excess, being vile to others, including his tutor, and generally being dissipated. In a letter home, he wrote, I do not work here and I never go to chapel. He left without graduating. However, things changed for Evelyn War at 27 when he converted to Roman Catholicism, realising that his life was unintelligible and unendurable without God. He said that his conversion was like stepping out of a looking glass into the real world God has made and then begins the delicious process of exploring it limitlessly. I wonder what your understanding of God is. You might be best mates. You might be agnostic. You may wonder what it's all about. You may not think of God at all, except for the odd moment when the words of songs you're singing in choir move you. You may struggle with issues such as the mess the world is in. You may even be angry with God. I would like to invite you while you're at university to explore the possibility that God might be there. There are lots of ways to do this. 
there's a wonderful Alpha course. I've had flyers from some great agencies such as the Roman Catholic Chaplaincy and the Jewish Chaplains. If you want to look at faith or ideas of God, then please do get in touch and I'd love to point you in the right direction. At some point in this academic year, I'm hoping over tea and cake in person to have discussion groups about how people from a, a broad variety of faiths understand concepts such as prayer or relationships. If you're interested in joining anything that would like to explore faith together with others, please do get in touch. So we've had a very brief overview of the chapel creatures in Hartford. I wonder which one has stuck in your mind most. My hope for all of us is that like the owl, we will grow in wisdom and community, that we will avoid the venom and the hatred of a snake about to attack that we would rise to all the challenges this year puts our way and that we would grow stronger through them, perhaps even because of them. And my prayer is that you will hunger and thirst after things that really matter, that you will invest in pursuing them and that you will become the person that God has meant you to be. May we pray. A prayer for the students of 2020. Members of the beloved community here at Hartford College and at the University of Oxford. On this night of hopeful and auspicious beginnings, my prayer for all of us, particularly our freshers, is a simple one that they may all be free. May they be free to be themselves. May our community be full of safe spaces, brave spaces where all are welcome and where all may thrive. May our students be free from an unhealthy perfectionism or a fear of failure. May they be free from self-imposed isolation at the misbelief that no one understands what they're going through or where they are coming from. May they be free to ask for help and to know when they need it. May they be free from a lack of flexibility, both in an openness to having their minds and perspectives change and in a vocational flexibility, allowing for surprise new paths to present themselves. May they be free to pursue leadership positions, to bring about positive change and to ride through this strange year like a boss. But may they also be free to sometimes rest and take it easy, also like a boss. We pray you bless them with a freedom of mind, freedom of spirit and a freedom of heart that will endure all their days at Hartford and Oxford and long after. Bless this first night of the term, bless this academic year and bless our University of Oxford. Amen. Guide me, O Thou great Redeemer, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but Thou art mighty. Hold me with Thy powerful hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed these miracles no more. Oh,
blessing. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.